Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Braden Harrington here with Davey Portman for Up Next, postwrestling.com. And usually, we talk every Thursday about NXT wrestling. Because mm. we're nerds and we just watch wrestling and Fucking talk about the wrestling. Yeah, all the wrestling and the graps. Guess what? We're not here to talk about that. Today. No, no, We're sir. here to talk about other nerdy shit. We're that also t- involves fighting and costumes. True. Wow. Yeah. True. Yeah. Tight co- costumes that are sometimes too tight. Yeah. We're here to talk about X Men. That's right. X Men. More specifically, Logan. Logan. Yes. You see, uh, we do movie reviews here sometimes on our uh, podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcast, you can find us. Um, and we basically find movies. That, this year, Hollywood is just rehashing everything. Yeah. Taking old shit. And making it new again. For sure. That's what Hollywood's been doing. So we've just been picking out movies that they've been putting out and taking out older ones. Yeah. So they put out this movie this summer. It's a big blockbuster hit called X-Men something Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I didn't go see it. Guess what? Not a lot of people did. So yeah, I was going to, and then it got absolutely panned. I probably will still see it. Yeah. Um, I am interested. I've seen all the other films, so I will... I yeah. will see it, but yeah, apparently it's bad. And as I said to you, I revealed to you, I think last week, um, they're redoing the Dark Phoenix story that they absolutely ruined, butchered in X Men Three. So they got the same writer from oh. X Men Three to write it, which is wow. makes no sense to me. Uh, um, this is this is uh, an interesting pick for us though, because uh, I actually was super into X Men. X Men's kind of how I got into wrestling, like comic okay. books. Comic uh, X Men was the the first comics. That I really like got into, and that's how I like got into wrestling because it's very similar fighting, everything like that. Like obviously, Spider Man actually fights wrestlers in his comics, but X Men was like the shit for me when mm. I was a kid. Like I was so invested. Uh, I had knowledge out my ears of X Men, and now transformed through the years, I know more about wrestling than I do for about sure. X Men now. But this was my shit when I was okay. a kid. So I was all about this. I would read the, the the books, the comics, the trades, the graphic novels. I would watch the X Men cartoon. The '90s one was the best. Say what you will. I know people love X Men Evolution. Did you watch any of these? Were those things over? I, I watched some of the cartoon. Yeah, the, the, 90s, the original one. Yeah, yeah. the animated the series. One. The '90s one. That one is like the classic. Mm-hmm. Like that shit is amazing. Um, I have a really st- strong affection. I, I have a strong love for the X Men arcade game. Okay. That you can find some, still find somewhere, but they have it, like, you can get on your phone or uh, things like that. They've re-updated it, but it's the classic, like, arcade. Like, I have... Like Street Fighter, kind it, of? Is mm, it? It's like a side-scrolling, like Ninja Scrolls. Okay, sure, sure. Go Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. And you, you, play, you can play with multiple people, and, like, Sweet. Wolverine was in it, Colossus is in it, mm. Nightcrawler. Uh, I've pumped quarters into that thing uh, when I was a kid, for sure, but, like, everything X-Men was my favorite. And my mom took me to see... The original X Men movie, which came out like what twenty something two thousand, I believe. Yeah, I went and saw that in theaters. I've seen most of them in theaters. I think Dark Phoenix is literally the only one I haven't gone to go see. But I'm okay. all about it. Yeah. And we asked our fans like, "Hey, do you want us to review X Men?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's review X Men." But our listeners spoke, and they they chose what movie we were going to review for for mm. them essentially, and they all picked the best one. Yeah. This is by far the best X Men film. X Men One and Two are great. Uh, Days of Future Past is good. Oh, like yeah, that X- one's great. First Class, like there are good films in this series. There are a few duds as well. Oh yes. Um, but this film stands head and shoulders above not just the X Men films. I'd say superhero all movies. superhero films. Yeah, it's up there. Like um, I'd put like this up there with the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight, with Endgame, with uh, Winter Soldier. Like mm-hmm. I think that's your top tier of superhero films. I'd say uh, Hugh Jackman was snubbed for a a nomination for this movie, some would say. Well, this movie did actually get a few nominations. Okay. Um, It's the first uh, live-action superhero film to be nominated for a screenwriting award. Okay. So it was nominated for um, Best Adapted Screenplay, uh, because obviously this... Uh, this film takes its story mainly from the Old Man Logan, Old Man Logan. run, which is set in like a uh, kind of dystopian alternative universe uh, yeah. with a tired, older uh, Wolverine, Logan. Um, so this film obviously takes a lot of influence from that. And 
uh, the the director of the Wolverine, which is the second uh, Wolverine film yes, in the series. Yes, Japan. Yep, uh, James Mangold came back to direct this one. Okay, I I've only seen the Wolverine once. It's not bad. I think anything after that awful wo- wo- uh, Wolverine's origin <laughs> film is going to be good. Oh, uh, I but- like that movie. Like it. Like I like <laughs> it because it's it's like watching a cartoon. It it wasn't it wasn't very good, but. Hey, it's let's fun. get Deadpool, a really <laughs> popular character who's who's famous for his mouth. Like he talks, yeah. and let's make him a mute. Yeah, that's Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he was great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I didn't think the Wolverine was bad. I thought he right. did a pretty good job with that. But this is something else. See, uh, Origins. It's yep. like I said, it's like a cartoon because it's like there's crazy action gambits in it for some reason. Mm. No one really knows why. There's so much shit that goes on in it. It's pretty ridiculous watching that movie, to be honest. Like it's it's silly for sure. essentially. It's just out there. And then the Wolverine is his story, like in Japan with yeah. the Silver Samurai. And I'm a huge fan of that in the series, in the comics, and all that. And I just thought the Wolverine was too boring. So they took what everyone was complaining about Wolverine Origins being ridiculous and yeah. silly, and then they're like, "We need to tone it down." And then they made it too toned down. And yeah, then they, they kind of I can see yeah. where you're going. So they really there. fixed everything for me. You can pretend you don't even know those two movies. Yeah. In my opinion, you can watch Logan without even watching. Them. Well, that's interesting you say that. I read an article recently which was really good because everyone looks at X Men the films Mm -hmm. and there are so many continuity errors all over the place and this article was saying don't look at it as a continuous story like obviously they've done Marvel Studios have done such a fantastic job we're tying everything together but this isn't one of those but this isn't this is obviously separate studios it was saying look at this more as the comic books Mm -hmm. you have within the comics you have uh like retcon all the time uh you have alternative universes and things so that's why we can have uh emma frost and moira mctaggart in two different periods of time looking the same age uh you can have charles xavier fucking explode in x-men 3 and then just have him back with no explanation well a lot of people pretend that movie never happened x-men is it x-men 3 the last stand uh yeah yeah the only thing i liked in that movie is multiple man because he's a okay. sick, underrated mutant. Multiple man, you can make multiple versions of yourself. I wish I could do that. I wish that was a power that I had. But that's the only good thing that I know. No, one of you is enough. <laughs> um, I, but yeah, so I think this is, that's a really interesting way to approach this. The character of... Um, oh, what's his name? Stephen Merchant's character, uh, Caliban. Yeah. Um, very similar to the... Uh, you know, we had Quicksilver in uh, Days of Future Past yes. and also in, uh, in Marvel, Avengers 2, yes. Age of Ultron, yeah. at the same time right. because he's owned, he's both like X Men and Avengers property, so both studios could have the rights to him. Um, Caliban is similar where he's in X Men Apocalypse and he's in Logan, right. but portrayed by a different character, mm-hmm. a different actor. Okay. And apparently this was just both scripts happened to have it him in it. So they were like, fuck it, okay. Like, cool, he, he's good. in the work and yeah. he's pretty significant in this film. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think you should view all these films as standalones, really. And I've said that to people. When I've said to people, you've got to watch this film. It's so good. Yeah. They go, oh, but I haven't seen any of the X-Men films. Like, you don't need to. Right. Like, people, everyone saw The Dark Knight. Not many people saw Batman Begins. Sure. I don't think everyone who saw no, The Dark Knight right. saw Batman Begins. You're absolutely right. Does it matter? No. no. You get a bit more context for characters. I mean, sure. seeing... It all comes together. But seeing yeah, Charles Xavier yeah. and Wolverine for the very last time yeah. means a lot when you've seen them for sure. the last 17 years. But I think as a standalone film, this is fantastic. Yeah, you could definitely just go watch this movie and you'd quickly understand things that are going on. It's like mutants and all this shit. Yeah. Like it's just a, it's a good story to, to, to go into without knowing. Um, like legit, I, I'm going to mention my mom again because she took me to this X-Men years ago yeah. in theaters. Cause she knew I was obsessed with, I was obsessed with Wolverine as a kid. Cause I'm like, yeah, a Canadian. Finally, we get our own Canadian and he's rough and he's, you know, whatever. Mm. But Nightcrawler was always my favorite X-Men cause he could teleport. Yeah. It's the coolest power as well. Um, so, she took me to see. I, I remember. I remember going to see X Men Origins, the Wolverine one. 
with yeah, her as well. Your favorite. And she was like, uh, like, didn't really like that one. So when this movie came out, I went to see Logan. And the, like, what, first minute of this movie, he just, like, destroys someone. In the first five minutes of this movie, they let you know that this movie is, in fact, rated R. Yeah. The first word, <laughs> well, the second word, <laughs> it goes, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. And you're like, all right, cool. So uh, I went to theaters and saw this, and th- I had to tell my mom after. I'm like, Mom, you really need to go see this because Hugh Jackman is fantastic in it, and like that, she really thinks he's uh, he she fits he fits the character. And it, they put fi- she didn't go see it, and they finally put Logan on Netflix like in the past year or so. So f- I finally was like, Hey, it's on Netflix. Like you might as- you should just watch it one yeah. day. She's like, Ah, it's comic books. Like I'm over that. Like I watched it because I would take you. Like I don't need to watch it. Months go by, and she. Next time I saw her, she was like, "So I watched Logan." She's like, "It's very violent." <laughs> like, yes, I, I told you it's very violent. She's like, "Besides that, great movie. That was it's, the best one they've done." I'm like, "Yeah, right." And she's like, "Oh, well, you sh- he should have been nominated. It was, he was good." It's like, yeah. You know what's crazy? Hugh Jackman wasn't originally cast as. Yes, movie. it was originally uh, Doug Ray Scott, uh, I don't even know who, who that is. was. Filming Mission Impossible 2 at the time. Right. And he turned and it down. And it got delayed and prolonged. So, no, he didn't turn it down. He, like, scheduling conflicts. Ooh. He'd already started this one film and it overran. Damn. So, and Hugh Jackman was a pretty pretty much an unknown. He was, yeah. Um, he'd done a lot of theatre. He obviously had a good look. And they were like, all right, sure. It's, I've heard this story a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. But by the sounds of it, it was pretty much, yeah, okay, you can act, you look good, all right, let's see what you can do. You can be Wolverine. You can growl. Which is crazy, because he's now, he's in the Guinness uh, Book of Records uh, for someone playing a superhero character for the longest amount of time. Jeez. Uh, A Marvel, I think they specify Marvel. So, 17 years. It's crazy, because he's this role. You couldn't picture someone else right now. I mean, we we might have to in a few years, because they're going to make these movies. They're going to... Marvel owning X-Men. They're going to create new ones, and they have to cast someone as, as Wolverine. It's going to be tough. But I don't think they... I think they should start these X-Men films and not have Wolverine in it sure. for a while. I think he's he's so iconic in this, in this I agree. character. Yes. Um, I don't want to see him recast right away. Yeah. I'd like... Them, I mean, they've they've got their slate of a lot of films, so we probably won't get an X Men film for a couple of years at yeah, least. Yeah. And I don't think I'd want to see X uh, Wolverine. Wolverine in it quite yet. Uh, I enjoy the X Two because of this whole origin story that goes on with him and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, I always enjoyed that one as well. But this one is completely different because this one grow, you watch this as an adult, and they don't pussyfoot around with the the violence. Well, I think that was always my problem. I, in the they've older really got to thank the success of Deadpool for yes, this because if if Deadpool wasn't the success it was, this film wouldn't be made. No, or it wouldn't be the film yeah. we have here. It would be completely and, and, different. And Hugh Jackman took like a huge pay cut for this movie because he he was like, yeah, make it make it rated R. And you know, if if I'm wrong, then I'm fucking wrong, and we go out with this terrible movie. And yeah, he took a big chance doing that as well, and uh, it. It worked out for him so well because this movie yeah. went and made so much money, and he and he was pretty adamant as well. He made it very clear: yeah. this is the end. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Or Which is also it. would have encouraged people to go. I think sure, to see it. Yeah, because it's like, hey, it's the last time I'm doing it. So, yeah. uh, well, I guess we should just talk about let's it. Let's do it. Do into this movie. Let's go into this Logan from what 2000 and 2017. Yeah, it's it's still recent. It's still yeah. new. Uh, old man Logan, bitches. It starts with Logan. He wakes up in the back of some car. While some uh, some dudes are robbing the rims of his limo, and like you said, what's the like the first or second word is? Oh fuck! <laughs> uh, he wakes up and he's like, "Hey guys, stop trying to take my rims." Then uh, they shoot him. They shoot the fuck out of him. Uh, but they don't know that he is a mutant, and he starts to heal. And he's like, "Guys, come on, you don't want to do this. We don't want to do this." And they're like, uh, "He looks old, grizzled, tired. Just like ugh, I can't be bothered with yeah, this right yeah. now." Uh, he pulls his claws out to stink the claw sounds, but, uh, his claws are kind of like not coming out as fast. Like yeah. he's got, uh, like <laughs> you need some blue chew. He's got, <laughs> he's got, uh, adamantanium dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> some more than others. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, you don't want to do this, but guess what? 
he does it. He starts stabbing people left and right. There's like a Goldberg type spear early in there. He there's, stabs like right through the jaw. Yeah, there's a specific cool. one where he goes. It's like one of the first like kills. An uppercut. He goes to uppercut you, but the claws go right through the guy's oh, fucking like amazing. Right through the guy's face. He is murking man's left and right. Uh, this does justice for all the fight scenes he's ever done in this entire series. Yeah. In this exactly first fight, because they're like, hey, remember when he goes ah in all the other movies. This one, you actually see, like, shit go down. Like, he is stabbing people up. He is like Freddy Krueger in this bitch. I love it. That was just the first scene. I think even the... Even just before this, the opening credits, you felt a different tone. It was very plain font. It was black screen. You didn't have all the, like, Marvel stuff. Yeah. Um, The music uh, had a more serious tone. Right. It felt like I was going into a proper adult... Movie. I feel like I'm going to like a, like West, a, serious, a dark Western style yeah. like movie, right? Like Coen Brothers kind of thing. They used like, uh, they used what is it, jo- Johnny Cash for the trailer, which yes. got everyone into this, right? So it's got that vibe, that old for brittle sure. the, uh, uh, vibe, you know. The year is 2029, uh, and mutants are like gone essentially. Like mutants just don't exist. If you follow the X Men storyline in the comics. The whole storyline is they're trying to get rid of mutants. Well, clearly, yeah. this worked. Um, obviously, some are still living among us. Uh, Wolverine, Logan, he's now a limo driver. His job is driving around people to funerals and mm-hmm. proms. Uh, he's He's got... There's a clip of him like doing his job, and like there's a prom, and the, the girls are like, ooh, driver, and they like show her boobs, and he's like laughing. Like, it's just funny that that's what, after all the shit he's been through, yeah. he's now just driving kids around. Yeah. Like, isn't that, isn't that funny? Uh, but his, his, his luck is about to change. He's approached by this woman. Uh, she's speaking in, in Spanish, and she's asking for Logan. And he's like, no, don't know what you're talking about. Leave me alone, lady. Get the fuck out of here. Um, he's, you see that he's always drinking constantly. Like Wolverine always did, but like even more so now. It's no, like you yeah. see him just drinking. Uh, we see him buying drugs, kind of like under the table, suspiciously from sort of, some sort of doctor. And we see this because he's being uh, like followed by this this guy with like a robot arm. Uh, robot hand. He approaches Logan and says, "Hey, uh, I'm looking for this lady. Have you seen her?" And he shows, you know, he shows her a picture of this woman that we just saw. Uh, we're looking for this woman. If you see her, give us a shout. And this guy's name is, I believe, Donald. Is what they he, they go by this the 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 evil guy, yeah, the baddie in this movie. Um, so we'll see where that leads to. Uh, Logan then gets in his limo with the drugs, and he drives through the Mexican border. And he goes to some like abandoned like I don't even know what this what this would be, some abandoned place, and he goes in there and we see Caliban, uh, the the bald headed dude who's what like an albino. <laughs> he can't yeah he can't be in the sun. He either. can't be in the sun. He's uh, yeah played by Stephen Merchant, which is a really interesting casting uh, choice. Do you know no this what's, guy? He, what's he been? He's uh, the co he's Ricky Gervais's co writer. So wrote oh, okay. uh, wrote The Office. Wow. wrote extras. Um, Good for him. Yeah, and he's he's in those shows, but he's always a, a comedy character. Sure. Um, which is just interesting casting, because this isn't really comedy yeah. at all. Yeah, like he has some funny stuff. He but, does, but yeah. he's not like... Hilarious. I wouldn't say he's light relief for no. the film. He's Definitely not. Um, well, he works with Logan here, because they uh, they live in this abandoned like place, and it's revealed that Professor X is still alive, but he's very old, and uh, senile, if you will, and he's still living in his wheelchair, but he's like not under captive. But Wolverine basically has to drug him to keep him alive. Um, we we Caliban explains that like you need to constantly keep this guy medicated because clearly something's going on with Professor X at his old age. That so he's he's older, he's senile, and he keeps having these like, basic seizures. Yeah, um, and because of his powers, his mind powers, the most powerful it, mind. It affects everyone. He yeah. has a seizure. Everyone. It sends everyone into chaos. Yeah, it's insane. So, <laughs> basically, Logan's life is just babysitting Professor X. Yeah. That's why he's working it. He's using the money from the limo job to pay for drugs to buy for Professor X. And it's like, X looks out, out for him all these years. Yeah. He took him in. So, it's... Years later. It's repaying. Yeah. It's repaying. It's, it's, taking, it's, it's like taking care of your granddad. It's your mum moving in. Like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, it really is. And uh, Logan's... He's going through his tough time. Um, 
he mentions Professor X. Uh, he's talking to Professor X. He's giving him the drugs. Uh, once he once he gives him something, Professor X kind of comes to and like he's back to himself. Yeah. And Patrick Stewart is so fantastic in this movie because he's he's playing the older grandpa. Like we all know, like someone that's like you know maybe is uh, you know old and and it's it's just. It plays that he plays this character really yeah. well. He's kind of the comic relief for me in this movie, for sure. Yeah. Um, so he's swearing left, right, and center <laughs> as well. Do you find it jarring because this is like the tenth movie in the series, and I think there's been like a single f bomb thrown. I love once it. Or twice. No, I love it. It's that's what makes it funny to me because he's he's. It, we're done. This. He's not fighting anyone. He doesn't yeah. have anyone to fight. He's done. It's just. But do you feel like well, like. Why hasn't there been any swearing? No, from all the other no. Pretend it doesn't exist. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Um, also, yeah. If I'm him, I'm swearing because like your life sucks. Yeah. Like you're stuck so here. He's probably more racist now. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, he's he at, loves he's all at, the mutants. He's at at that point. No, in age no, now. no. Professor doesn't, doesn't give don't, a shit. Don't say that about Professor X. <laughs> that would be Magneto because he's the bad guy. Yeah. Like, Magneto is like uh, all that. Uh, no, Professor X. We don't. No, never. Um, he says the word friends. He says fuck off, Logan, in one of his first words. That's how you know. He says, don't leave me with that damn albino. <laughs> Maybe he is racist. <laughs> uh, don't, don't leave me with the damn albino. Um, and he says, hey, Logan, don't forget, like, I'm the one who took you in. You were a cage fighter when I, was, when I found you. And it's like, yeah, remember in that movie? He was, he was in Canada. He goes, what a disappointment you are. Oh. Which is, he's cutting. Yeah. Just terrible. Um... Logan is in his room. He's just drinking and drinking, and he's looking at his uh, his weak claw. His uh, his what did I say? Adamantium dysfunction. Yeah, yeah. His his claw there. He's like, hey, what's going on with this? You're right. He does need some blue chew. Um, the albino mentions that uh, <laughs> mentions Nosferatu and Spotted Dick. In, in, just just throwing that out there. What is Spotted Dick? It's a dessert. It's a pudding. It's like a sponge pudding. Okay. Why is it called Spotted Dick? Because it's like got like little, like bits of things in it. But like dick, that's like dick used to mean something different. What did it used to mean? Richard. <laughs> nice. I just can't picture Logan eating spotted dick. Um, I found. Uh, sorry, the the albino, um, Caliban. He he mentions that he was doing Logan's laundry, and in the laundry he found an adamantium bullet. Mm. Now adamantium. For those who don't know, but if you're listening to this, you probably do. It's the metal, the type of metal that is in Logan's body. That's mm. what keeps him. The, the The whole thing is his bones are made out of this. They, they were inserted into him, um, and the only way, essentially, if he wanted to die from a bullet, would have to be an ad- adamantium, kind of like a werewolf, the silver bullet, but yeah, Wolverine style. Um, he gets mad and he goes and does his job limo driving and this is when he's when he's at the prom thing uh, it's really funny um, I just love up to this point the what the fuckness of it all yeah it's ridiculous um, they're not filling you in with no, what's happening no. this is like this is a few years after you last saw them and everything's fucked like Literally, Logan the world is, is crazy Logan it looks weak uh, he's yeah. a he's coughing complete constantly. alcoholic yeah he's like coughing up blood and stuff um Charles Xavier is losing his mind, um, is coming towards the end of his life. They're with this albino Caliban. Where did he come from? And they're like, no, nah, we're not, we're not going <laughs> to fill things in, which I like. I like it's that just, just we're dropping you at this point in time with these characters and this is the world they're in. He gets a call to go to a motel for a pickup. He goes there. Uh, he sees this little kid playing with a ball and he sees the woman. Gabriella, she says. My name is Gabriella. I need you, Logan. I know you're Logan. I know who you are. Um, I'll give you fifty thousand dollars if you drive me to a certain location. He's like fifty thousand dollars. Like what? Uh, the she says. Here's twenty thousand right now. You'll get the rest when we get there. And he's like, What's going on? Why? And she says that my boyfriend wants to take my daughter. So you better go. Like, oh, I don't know about this. Like, okay, fine. So he's like, I'll, I'll come get you. I have to, I'll be back. I, I'll, be, I'll go, I'm, I'm down, but I got to come back. He goes to tell Professor Xavier and uh, Caliban, like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to be going away for a little while. But when he shows up to, to meet the woman again, 
She's dead. Mm. She's in the motel room, but she's dead. Uh, he takes, he finds her phone, and uh, he goes back to his thing. But what he doesn't know is that the little kid, the woman's daughter, or so we think, got in the back of his car. So now when he's drove back to his home with Professor X and Caliban, the kid is, uh, gets out of the trunk. And he didn't realize this. But before they can deal with it, the bad guy, the metal arm dude, he shows up. He says, hey, I thought we had a deal, Mr. Wolverine. I thought that when uh, my friend Gabriella came in contact with you, you would let me know. But you didn't do that. So I'm looking for this kid. And Wolverine's like, I don't know what kid you're talking about. And it's like, well, the one that goes with the backpack that you're holding. Uh, so there's all this whole mess that's going all, all, all around. Uh, he says that he, this bad guy realizes that Wolverine is hiding Professor X. And he knows about Professor X. And he basically is like, you're hiding this weapon of mass destruction, the brain of Professor X. He says, uh, you know, you, you hurt my feelings. And that's, that's not a good way to start our relationship here, Wolverine. And he's got his friends, like, uh, not, what are they, special agents, special ops? They got guns and they're yeah. like all not mutants but like muta- uh, altered physically. These evil. are the Reavers, right? Yeah, 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 like altered people. Um, Wolverine says, "You know, put your guns down. I don't like guns." But the girl starts attacking everyone. Um, th- this little girl starts, uh, I don't know, killing killing people left and right. Well, she starts by just rolling the head along. Yeah, like she goes in and comes out and just. Rolls his head and right. they're like, "Oh, she's fucked people up." So, so they send in like all these guys into the into the thing, and she's just chilling, eating cereal or some shit. Yeah. And next thing you know, she rolls a, a, a head of like this giant jack dude robot guy. It's so funny, and, and she's, she's just a little cute. Looking she's like a little like, girl, innocent right? looking thing. And wouldn't you be darned? Uh, she is just she's she's just a. A mutant. She's just murking yeah. people. She's like little Wolverine. Uh, she. It's revealed that she too has claws, and uh, she literally gets like this movie is violent. Mm. She gets an arrow st- shot right through her, and she like just starts breaking it and like w- bleeding everywhere. Mm. And she's just like killing people. She's like k- cutting people's heads off. She's like stabbing people. She has the- spikes from her feet as well. Yeah, not they only don't just come out of. She has two in her hands rather yeah. than three. Right, and then. One in each foot. In, in the feet as well. So she's like updated Wolverine, yeah. essentially. But in a little kid, it's crazy. Uh, she's killing all these people. Um, <laughs> so Logan... Uh, Logan... Sorry, I, I kind of skipped over. Logan has Caliban uh, knock out the, the dude, Donald, yeah. the robot, the leader here. And they said to go dump him. But... This is when they all came back. So he knows he didn't die. And this is when they all come back. And this is when uh, the slicing and dicing happen. And yeah. the crazy fights in here. Um, Logan starts to fight with her now. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Because this girl has claws just like me. And heels just like me. I love the way she she moves. Because she really seems like like a, a wolverine or something. Like yeah. she, she moves like an animal. Okay, which I think yeah. is really cool. It's not just slashing with the claws. It's sure. like... Like a little vicious animal just yeah. jumping on people, like clawing at them. The fight scenes in this movie are so it's crazy. Great. Yeah, she's like, because she has the two that come out of her yeah. thing. She does this thing like Rey Mysterio, where she like seated sentons a guy and shit. And anyways, there's this thing where she literally takes the two claws and stabs them right through this guy's eyes. Like they fit perfectly where yeah. your eyes would be, mm-hmm. right? So she just stabs this guy right through the fucking face, uh, slicing and dicing. Uh, like I said, the seated senton right to the the claws to the head. Um, Logan starts helping her out here. They're just going back to back, claw like lethal weapon, just claws out. It's insane. More of these bad guys in trucks and guns come, so they're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. So he throws uh, Professor X in the back of the limo. The little girl is fighting still. He gets in the limo, and the girl jumps in as well, and they start to to drive away. They try to escape here, and now it's just this crazy chase scene. Um, Eventually, he, he gets through, like, a gate. There's a train, which they they cross over the tracks, and the train basically saves them the, because you can't... The bad guys can't cross over while the train is going, so... I liked the... With the fence, it looked like they were going to do one of those heroic, just, like, smash into yeah, the fence yeah, but and get it stops them. except they get stuck, and it's yeah. like, fuck! Which is true. You can't just go through no. fences sometimes. It doesn't always work like that. You can climb them, but if he, had his, if he just got out of the car and sliced them first and yeah. then got back in the car, <laughs> it would have worked. Uh, so, 
finally, because of the train, uh, they do escape. But this this whole scene is just crazy as well. Uh, and his limo is just shot up and beat up. His limo was pretty sexy, actually, for a limo. Like limos these days look pretty nice. Mm. Back in the day, limos didn't. But this his limos his limos lit. Um, he eventually has to ask, you know, who the fuck are you to this little girl? Like, who are you? And Professor X is like, does she remind you of anybody? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yes. Um, the bad guys it cuts back to them, and they have Caliban. Uh, they have kidnapped him, and his power, his mutant power, is he can find mutants. He can see. Yes. He can see where other mutants are. So they're torturing him with sunlight, and uh, they're like, "We need you to help find where they went. You're. We're going to be using you to help us find your friends." Sorry. It cuts to Logan and Xavier. Um, they have Gabriella's phone. And they decide to look through it. And on the phone, there is a video that she has put together. She's like, if you're seeing this video, I'm dead. Um, you need to know what's going on. And they, they click play on it. And it's like this behind the scenes of this whole thing that's going on with this company. Um, they're raising little kids, but they're putting mutant powers in the kids. And there's basically little mutants running around in this, in this like jail, this facility mm-hmm from this company and they're, they're raising soldiers and killers and they're showing all these different like little kids with little power, with special powers. I think the company is called Alkali. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, they're showing like what it's crazy. They're like raising kids in facilities to, to fight and kill. But of of course the kids are learning to fight back and learning what these powers are. It's just a whole fucked up kind of situation. Um, and, the girls like the, in the video, Gabriella says that you know we need to go away. We need to get to the safe haven, essentially, and that's why that's where I was going to pay you to take the little girl. But you need to get the girl there. Please go there. And the phone dies. The phone, the the battery on the phone dies. So as Logan and Xavier are watching this, they're like, "Fuck!" Now we need to get a charger for this phone. And Logan, uh, Xavier is like, "Logan, we need to take her there." Logan, like, we need to go there. And he's like, I know. Uh, wh- why should we care? Like, what the, wh- what the fuck's going on? Logan is concerned because he's like, why should we change our whole life course for this little girl? We don't know. We were fine without her. With, we can just continue on without her. Fuck it. Everything's fucked anyways. Cause he's, he's like over all this fighting and stuff yeah, anyway. Like, he's like, old. He, he doesn't, doesn't do want to get involved in yeah, he's another been through, mission. Yeah, like, he's been through this shit. He's like, I'm not doing this. Like, what are you talking about? But Xavier's like, Logan, we have to. We have to, Logan. Logan... She is your daughter. He's like, yeah. what's like, geez, ah, I don't know. I can't, I can't do this, man. I can't. He's like, Logan, what, Professor? I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Which, when I saw that in theaters, I laughed so yeah. fucking hard. Uh, so, <laughs> they're at some kind of gas station truck stop, and Wolverine is shown helping Professor Xavier pee. Mm-hmm. Get in. This is a great underrated scene where he's trying to help him get his belt and pants off. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. But while that's happening, the little girl, Laura, she's uh, realizing that gas stations have amazing snacks, including tackies, which I'm sure she was snacking on in there. Uh, She just starts helping herself, popping the top off some Pringles. Once you stop, once you start, you can't stop. And the gas station attendant's like, yo, what the fuck, little kid? Like, stop. Like, what are you doing? She puts on shades. She thinks she's cool shit. She thinks she's cool. I I love her. I think she's awesome. I love all these moments where... She is just a kid. Like, yeah. she's just a kid who wants pink sunglasses and candy. <laughs> um, but the way she's going about it is so not kid like. Yeah. Um, the, basically, it cuts back, and Wolverine has to save this gas station attendant because yeah. he's about to get stabbed in the fucking face over some Pringles. And he's like, uh, sorry about that. And, like, uh, <laughs> basically. Then steals the charger. He's like, you got phone chargers? <laughs> the guy's scared, probably shit his pants. He's like, oh my god, this little girl just pulled out blades out yeah. of her fucking <laughs> hand and is about to stab them in my face, and I've just been saved by this nut, this scary man now. <laughs> and as he grabs the, the phone charger, he goes back and grabs a handful of cigars. I love that. I love that. <laughs> it's not Wolverine without a cigar in his mouth. Um... He finally has a phone charger, therefore he can charge the phone. He watches the video and it shows like the kids and, and all the evil that they, they're, they're put through. Like It's revealed that this Alkali, this company, after realizing that working on little kids as mutants and cre- creations, it wasn't working. So they decided to create something next level. The next level baddie, if you will. 
So all the test subjects of the little kids, they're not needed. Therefore, they're going to kill all of the test subjects. Whoa. Yeah, so all these little kids they created, they're going to kill. So that's where this Gabriella and her other doctors and nurses, they realized what was going on because the, the this company, uh, it's it goes in depth, but this company was like treating little kids as like m- monsters guinea when pig. they're just little, yeah. yeah, guinea pigs. But really they're like, they're humans and yeah, mutants sure. and stuff. So the, they helped these kids escape. Obviously not all the kids escaped. So the the kids are at some some destination and uh, they want to... They want to get the kids there, essentially. Uh, so Logan is, is like finding all this stuff and he's like, oh man, like, I don't know if I want to go to this thing. And the place is called Eden is where they think this, this magical safe haven is. Uh, now Logan and Xavier and Laura are all in Las Vegas. They get a hotel room in Vegas to try to lay low because um, Xavier's like, we're going to this thing. Like, you got to drive us there. Yeah. Like, we need to get this girl to this thing. Like, what else do we have going on in our life now? <laughs> Literally nothing. Yeah. So we need to go there. But Logan's just all over. He's just done with this shit. Uh, Laura sees a mannequin, and it's of a daughter and a dad in, like, clothes. And she's, like, wondering, like, oh, like, is this what life is? Like, mm. a dad and a daughter. Oh. Um, and Xavier's like, hey, we do need some new clothes. Like, we, we need to lay low. Like, we need to hide out. So they do that. They go in the hotel room. Uh, Logan's drinking. And Xavier and Laura are watching this old Western. Um, I'm forgetting what the Western was now. I wrote it down, but clearly my notes... Uh... <laughs> They're watching some old Western movie. And this movie is a is a Western kind of feel to it. So I, I like oh, that, sure, it's, yeah. that it's tied in. It ties in near towards the end. Um, he, he finds uh, her backpack. Logan finds Laura's backpack. And in it is like some of the files on, on her and, and everything like that. But in her files, it says that Laura was created from DNA from a test subject known as James Howlett Logan. So it is, in fact, created from his DNA. Right. Therefore, it's his daughter. Nice. Is that how it works? Yeah. You are the father. If he went on Maury, <laughs> that's what he would have said. Uh, he also finds X-Men comic books. In yeah, I love this. <laughs> so this is where it kind of like blurs the lines a little of like what is mm. going on in here. So, Well, they've done this a few times in, in the films where uh, like in that world, people have made comic books about these real life mutants or superheroes yeah. and things. Um, so... Yeah, he's found them. So he reads some of them, but on one of them, the, the the comic is about Eden. It's about them going to this mutant this safe place. haven. Yeah. So now he's like, wait a second, this is fucking fake. This is yeah. bullshit. This, this is, is garbage. a story. Yeah, this is like someone wrote this. So he's like, I'm not going to this place. Like, this is some fucked up bullshit. I'm not doing this. Meanwhile... He's trying to get his car... He's trying to get a, a, a truck. He goes to uh, some used car truck place some lot he finds a lady he's like yeah I want this truck and she's like cool for 8000 I can get it to you tomorrow blah 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 he says for 10000 no paperwork give it to me right now yeah she's trying to buy a new truck it's the way how you, that's the way to do it and she says you know what I can get the wheels fixed but give me an hour he's like what can I do in an hour looks over there's a bar next door he goes cool sweet <laughs> <laughs> so he goes into the bar and he's reading these comics uh, and this is when he realizes it's all fake uh, and he's like, what is all this shit? I can't believe this. Uh, so he gets lit. He goes back to the room. On his way back to the hotel, he realizes something is going very wrong. Uh, we said earlier that Professor Xavier gets these like seizures. And when mm. that happens, like it's like the whole world is like going through like, yeah. a seizure, essentially. And everyone in Las Vegas is having a seizure. Everything is like frozen and, and shaking and everything. Um, he realizes that the bad guys are, have followed them, have found them. Um, he is like going through his room, like in slow motion, essentially through this whole thing and realizes that they have found professor X in the room, in the hotel. He goes, he starts stabbing people, but in like the slow motion thing. Well, yeah. And he was crawling through the walls using his claws. Yeah. Like to like pull himself yeah. through. It's pretty cool. Um, and he's like slowly like uh, he's trying to he's trying to go through the slow motion. And it's like everyone is aware, but it, everyone's kind of like frozen because of Professor X's mind, mind freak. 
And uh, the the kills in this are interesting because it's he he is still moving slowly. Yeah. But he's killing people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it looks pretty really cool. violent. Yeah. Like he's just again like stabbing, stabbing through people. the face. And... He's like he stabs a guy through like the temple, and you see like the claws go through. Like the the violence in this is so fantastic. Um, he finally he's cl- cl- sc- literally scratching and clawing his way to get there, and. Uh, he sees that there is a soldier standing above Professor X with a gun right to his head. And clearly that's what set off Xavier because he, sure. he was about to die. Yeah. Um, so in order to save himself and Laura, he, this, this is what had happened. So Logan finally takes uh, like his, uh, his medicine his, in, t- to inject Professor X. And he finally does that. And uh, the seizures stop and all the soldiers, every, every, all the people he died drop. Yeah. All the people he killed drop essentially so he grabs professor x grabs laura and they get the fuck out of there they get in their their new truck and he drives off but professor xavier is like yelling like i'm sorry to all these like strangers in the casino because they're all like everyone who's playing the slot machines are like on the floor like what the fuck is going on (laughs) with my brain and he's like i'm sorry and uh professor x says you know i had to do what i had to do to save us because they were about to kill us like we had to do this this mind freak um so they they escape but I just want to go back to one of the deaths, um, yeah. which I, I forgot to mention. One of the guys he kills, his eyes really slowly turn yeah, to and see like, Logan. Oh, no. But Logan's obviously stronger than yeah. them, so he's able to power through it. Yeah. And it's like the moment of realization in slow motion that, oh, fuck, I'm going to die. It's, yeah, it's an awesome scene here. Yeah, the the effects are really cool, too, to see, like, in slow motion, but it's not at the same time. Uh, the Western movie that I was talking about is called Shame, uh, I remember, because it, it's brought up later. Okay. The, 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 the lines in it will be brought up later. Have you, do you, are you a fan of Westerns? I haven't watched a whole lot. No, I haven't, I've seen some John Wayne. Yeah. I've seen some Clint Eastwoods, The For Good, sure. The Bad, and The Ugly, but this one's my favorite Western. Uh, so now they're, uh, they're driving off. It cuts, they, they've escaped essentially. It cuts to the bad guys, Alkaline, the, the evil baddies. And, uh, they're, they're, they're like boss scientist guy. Yeah. Another British guy. Oh, all British are evil. Yeah. I, I think so. Whenever there's an old white dude who's British, you know, he's the bad guy. Yeah. Like realistically. The bad guys or the other British character is like afraid of the sun in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they're working on something that's even more menacing. A new toy. We'll get to that later. Logan and Xavier, they're discussing uh, Laura's foot claws. Because Logan's a little jealous that she's got them and he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, uh, they're driving like on the highway. And they almost get into an accident. Someone like cuts them off and it's, they're swerving. But a nearby car swerves. And they were carrying a bunch of horses... And the horses are, like, let out on the highway, and the horses, like, go everywhere. And Logan's like, oh, that sucks for them, but let's keep driving. And Xavier's like, no, like, we got to help them. And he's like, no, someone will come along. It's like, someone has come along. So he's like, ugh, fine. <laughs> so he gets out, and he's helping this stranger wrangle up his horses. Xavier uses his mind powers to, like, calm the horses down, and essentially all the horses are just cool now and they all get back into the back of the truck thing uh these strangers are like hey man thank you so much for for helping us out uh how about dinner you know on us and he's like oh no no we gotta get going we gotta get going me and my uh me and my dad here gotta we we gotta get out of here and they're like no 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 no, come on we we gotta we gotta we gotta treat you to a nice warm cooked meal xavier's like it would be great to see like the small small town (laughs) he's like "Ah, fine so now they're going to some stranger's house in a farm town to go for dinner. Uh, they go there. The family is serving up some nice uh, mashed potatoes. And Laura just starts, like, eating everything with her hands. And Logan's like, no, 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 no. Like, you got to use your, your knife and fork. Which is funny because they have, like, yeah. essentially knives as hands. Um, it's, it's cute because Logan's being a dad here. Yeah. He's teaching her how to eat. I love how she always gives, like, a sort of scowl whenever mm-hmm. she's taught, like... Yeah. She's taught like, a lesson, uh, she's just like, hmm. Because she's a little kid. Yeah. They're, they're the worst. <laughs> could you imagine having a little kid that could potentially kill you? <laughs> no, that's terrifying. This is why kids shouldn't have power. <laughs> uh, so they're eating dinner, and uh, everything's lovely. They're all having a... a they're, just, they're just having a, a beautiful moment with this family. And uh, the family, are they're discussing like traveling and, 
and and Xavier is like, man, like I've been a teacher. And they're like, yeah, we, he was a teacher, and uh, I was a student, and uh, at a school. And Xavier's like, I've never gotten to see like what family is supposed to be, what real life is supposed mm. to be, because I've been trapped doing missions in school and ex- my 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 mutants. And it's just beautiful for Xavier t- for me to see this. The sad part is they're all going to fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> Watching this for the first time, you're like, oh, they're they're gonna they're die, dead, and dead, dead. yeah, it's just sad. Uh, so these poor strangers, they're about to die. Uh, their water gets shuts off sh- is shut off as they're trying to do dishes. Um, the family says that we have a spare room, like stay the night, like and then drive off in the morning, like don't don't rush out in the nighttime to drive. But their water is shut off. The family reveals that they're having issues with like this property manager that, that wants them to sell their their property or something along those lines, like farmland and stuff mm. like that. Um, so we better go check out on the water. Um, and but the guy like is bringing a gun, and Logan's like, "What are you What are you doing?" He's like, "Uh, you know, sometimes th- they can be uh, th- bullies." He's like, yeah. oh. So he goes. W- Logan goes with him to go fix the water, leaving Xavier, Laura, and the family at home. So Logan now and this dad of this family, this farmer, they drive out to the, the field to work on their – to go find the water pipe or whatever the source of this is. And they they reveal that uh, something clearly was like tampered with. Someone was tampering with their water. And as the guy is trying to fix it, these uh, this truck pulls up. It's like pickup truck. And these uh, redneck cowboy baddies, these bullies, they show up. And they're like, hey, what are you doing? This is our property. And he's like, come on, guys. Like, you keep fucking with my water. Like, you know exactly what you're doing. Like, stop. And they're like, oh, yeah. He's like, who's your friend here? Like, you're hiring some help? He's like, no, like, leave us alone. Like, you don't want to You don't want to start shit. And he's like, yeah, I think we do. And the guy pulls out a, a shotgun. Red Nest got a shotgun. Wolverine decides to bust the guy's nose <laughs> and then breaks the shoddy in half uh, it drops. He has a. He's got the shotgun. Drop the sawed off. Beat you with a piece that was sawed off of. Uh, basically, Wolverine scares off these guys because yeah. he punches them in the face, and the guy's nose is shattered. Uh, and they drive off, and they're scared. Logan's a hero, for now. It cuts back to the house. Logan walks into the room, and Charles uh, is like awake, but just going to bed. And Charles said. You know, I've had such enjoyment today because of the stuff I've been going through lately. And it's here that Xavier reveals that, you know, none of the other X-Men are in this movie. Mm. We're not really sure why. It's revealed here. It's because Charles killed them with one of his brain, uh, you know, one of his power surges or seizures that back in Westchester somewhat years ago that there was an accident and that Professor X did, in fact, kill the X-Men, obviously uh, by an accident. Yeah. And he obviously still feels like regret and feels sad about this. And obviously this fucks with him uh, beyond belief. And he's all he's he's revealing this to Logan and he's saying how good it was to kind of just have a day here with a family and see uh, like what life is and what love is all about. And just like he just feels good. Yeah. And as he's t- telling Logan this. The camera pans over to Logan, but Logan looks just a little different and stabs Professor X. It's revealed that it's not, in fact, Logan, but some sort of creation that the bad guys were working on. He looks like Wolverine in, like, X-Men 1, Yes, doesn't he? He looks very young. Yeah, sideburns. uh, Like, bigger... Yeah, he's a created. He's a cesspool. He's cre- he's like a created test tube baby. Yeah, but it's Wolverine, but a younger one. Uh, Laura then attacks him. Starts attacking the evil Wolverine. Um, I wrote he's younger and bearded is yeah. what I wrote here. Um, so the the family now is like, what the fuck's going on? The mom here is then slay like the, this evil Logan kills the the mom and and family here like it's just it's just evil and sadistic it's like he has no emotion essentially he's just this creation that's a a, that's a monster um logan runs into the house and they see like the wife and kid and everything is being killed here um the the evil logan is trying to kidnap laura it seems but instead logan runs upstairs to check on professor x 
And as he does, Professor X is not dead yet, but he's 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 just about to die. And this is an important scene, I think, for me, because he tells him, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Hey, don't die. It was not me. Because at this point, Xavier's like, yo, Logan, why the fuck did you just do this? Why did you just stab me, dude? What the fuck? And he's like, yo, it wasn't me. Charles, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And he's like trying to fix the bleeding. Like he's trying to, he's trying to make Xavier live, but mm. he's kind of realizing that's probably not going to happen. Like Xavier is about to die here. But Xavier's like, you have to go get the girl. We got to go get the girl. So he now chases after the evil Logan, but the bad villain British guy, he's, he's in charge of this evil Logan. He's the one who designed this essentially for alkaline. And he's the one who's trying to kidnap the girl. Well, while the bad Logan is about to hand over the girl to the evil. Flogan, should we say? The Flogan. Fake Fake Logan. Logan. Yeah. Flogan. Flogan's about to kidnap the girl and give it to the (laughs) British guy. But the rednecks show up. The evil bully rednecks from like a few frames ago. They show up and they're like, yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy who just punched me in the nose. They're like, hey there, boy. You're the one who's been who's been messing with us. Well, we're here to mess with you. And uh, they're like, stop. And Flogan doesn't stop. Because Flogan has no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah. He's just a cre- creation. He's just a monster. They shoot him. And he's upset at being shot but he heals just like logan if not better than logan because he's like updated and he chops his fucking head off he just chops one of these guys heads and decides to kill all of them uh the evil british guy's like losing his mind like what's going on this isn't supposed to happen right now where who are these people like what the fuck's going on uh flogan just starts killing people left and right um logan realizes that professor x is dying Professor X does die, so Logan gets so fucking mad. Wolverine has rage. Wolverine's rage. Did you ever play that game? Is it good? Yeah, that was lit. What was that one? I think it was like Game Boy or PS1 or... I don't know, something. It was lit. Uh, Wolverine gets pissed. You just killed his his boy. You just killed his dad, essentially. Yeah. Uh, He's mad. Uh, He goes out there, and it is a stab fest. Uh, He keeps trying to kill this, this Flogan... But the updated Wolverine is obviously stronger and faster and heals better. So it's not really a fair battle. Like our old Logan versus the new the new model, essentially. Um, they're stabbing each other left and right. It's crazy. It's just a bloody mess. And our Logan is just covered in blood. Like he's like about to die. It's like crazy. Just ins- He even gets stabbed viciously in the armpit. <laughs> now... I don't know about you. I've never been stabbed in the armpit, but it probably fucking yeah, hurts. Yeah, I don't want to be stabbed. Like, in the that armpit, just no. sounds painful. Imagine a Wolverine claws stabbing you in the Maybe. armpit. You would lose your arm. Your yeah. arm would, like, fall off your body. Well, Logan gets moshed up right in the armpit. Um, the dad of the family comes out of nowhere with the save and drives his truck into the evil Logan, into the Flogan. Sending him into like the back of a like a tractor thing, so yep. like he's like impaled. He's trapped. He's like yeah. trapped on this thing, and this guy just starts unloading his shotgun on this like evil Logan, and the good Logan's like standing there, like bloodied mess, looks like a just looks like dog food mm. essentially, and this guy doesn't know they're right from wrong, so he starts shooting at our good Logan, um, but it 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 does it doesn't do anything. So good Logan. Uh, Grabs Laura. They get in their truck with Charles' body, and they drive off and they escape. Um, and then it cuts later, like the, the the morning, where the the bad guys, Alkaline and the evil British dude, they find the the Flogan kind of like stuck there, still uh, trying <laughs> it's to get like out, trying to get out of this thing. Uh, they inject him with uh, is it what are they calling this drug? This like. I can't remember. Yeah, I didn't have it down. They, 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 the the source of like this healing thing, this regenerator yeah. thing, is this this liquid, this drug, and they inject it into this this flogan, and it basically makes him heal quicker, even sure. faster. But it gives you like rage and evil things. We'll get to that. It cuts to Logan and Laura, and they have buried Professor X uh, somewhere like on a, off a highway, passing in some some wooded area. Uh, and it's, it's really sad here cause Logan's like all emotional and sad and he, uh, 
he's with Laura and Laura like grabs his hand. Yeah. And it's like the, it's like, it looks like the, the cover of old man Logan. Yeah. If you've read, have you read the comic no, old man no. Logan? It's way different than this movie, by the way. For sure. Um, but the famous shot here is like recreated in the movie nice. and it looks just really cool of them like kind of holding hands, yeah. but it's over the death of professor Xavier. Uh, his, his thing is, uh, is an X as well. Oh like, yeah. When X-Men die, you got to put the X. Yeah. Right. You got to, um, so it's like a, it's a whole moment. Obviously, Logan is pissed and like sad and he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Um, he tries to start his truck, but it's not it's not starting and he's having a freaking freak out. So he starts busting it up. There's a shot where he like busts the w- window off the side of the truck. This looked like so much fun to shoot for, <laughs> for Hugh Jackman because it's literally just him busting this thing up like there was no fake that was this was just him busting isn't there up. a place in Toronto called like the rage room yeah where yeah, you can yeah. just smash up cars you just go and, and like you break shit yeah, yeah let's go break stuff yeah why do you have anger issues that you need to <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take you after I beat you at Mario Kart you're that's not, the only time you're not beating me <laughs> yeah I, the only time I've ever seen you get so fucking mad is when I destroy you at Mario Kart we'll send you to a rage room um, so he's busting up his truck but he's still like healing from his fight from the Flogan so he's like kind of like half dead himself. So he's just like losing his mind. Laura sees a guy fishing with a truck, and next thing you know, Logan wakes up and she's driving the, the <laughs> truck, and he's like passed out. And he's like, "What the fuck?" And next thing you know, he wakes up in a doctor's office. So Laura has stolen a truck for him, driven him to a doctor, and he wakes up with like IVs in him and like some like walk-in clinic essentially. Yeah. Uh, he wakes up. He's confused. The doctor is like, "It's so nice to to finally meet someone like you, a mutant. Like, oh, they don't exist anymore. Like, how crazy is this?" He says, "You're you're poisoned. Something inside of you is poisoning you." Um, he says, "Listen, doc. Thanks for saving me. But if you want to stay alive, forget we were here." Mm. And uh, they leave the clinic. Uh, he gets back in the truck with Laura. He says, "Listen, I don't know how you got me here, but thank you." Thank you. And then finally, for the first time, Laura speaks. <laughs> she says, De nada. <laughs> and he's like, wait a second, what? You, you can speak? And she starts speaking in like Spanish and starts naming uh, people. Starts yep. naming the other kids, essentially, that she was with. She starts naming all their friends like, uh, I don't remember. He, he's mad that she just starts talking. Yeah. Now, essentially. Uh, she says that we need to go to North Dakota, por favor. And like shows him like, North Dakota. We need to go to North Dakota. He's like, no, we're not going to North Dakota. Like, look, look at this comic book. It's fake. It's bullshit. It's not real. This place doesn't exist. Like this Eden thing. It's fake. It's garbage. It's not real. She goes, North Dakota, North Dakota. He's like, fine. You want to go? You want to you go to North Dakota? Fine. We got nothing else to fucking do. We might as well go to North Dakota. That's how I see it. Yeah. Like, what else do you got going on, dude? You're Not- on the run anyway. So like- Yeah, like, you're going to either die or you're going to North Dakota. So he's like, fine. You want to go to th- North Dakota? Let's We'll go to North Dakota just to show you that you're wrong. And she says, Beneke, which I think means thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My Spanish is not very good. Um, he basically, they drive off and... Uh, they, they get to North Dakota eventually. I don't know how far North Dakota is from uh, wherever they were, but I'm, I can't remember where I'm they assuming were. it's a very long drive. Yeah. Uh, but he had time to rest up again. He wakes up and uh, they, he wakes up and he's in North Dakota. Just like that. Yeah. She drove them all the way to North Dakota. Um, there's, they're like in some like desert, rocky, kind of mountainy area here. I've never been to North Dakota, but it looks beautiful. Um, there's a bunch of kids, and there's a hideout. So Eden, in fact, is real. Yeah. He's like, what? This is an actual thing? Like, this is nuts. This is crazy. Uh, the kids, like, help him. He gets up and instantly passes out because he's like, this is fucked. Uh, they help him on, like, a stretcher, like, raise him to their little hideout. He almost, like, dies from falling from this thing. Um he he saved they save him and they heal him with the uh the bad guy juice the green juice uh they say listen this will help you heal but 
it makes you go rabid. So don't take all of it at once. Yeah. Like, do little doses. And he's like, cool. So they give him that to like continue to heal. He mentions the adamantium bullet. Says like sometimes he thinks about using it on himself, but Laura's like upset. By you this. know, just the standard stuff you talk to kids. About. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "What is this?" And he's like, "Well, you know, I was thinking about killing myself with it." So, you know, tough, tough. It's it's an interesting topic to talk yeah. to your kid about, but uh, times they are changing. Uh, he uh, wakes up. The Kims are the kids are trimming his beard. Yeah, they're making him look like Wolverine. Yeah. The Wolverine from the comics. From the comic book. So they, they're they working on his beard. Now, I'll tell you, if I woke up to little kids trimming my beard, I'd be pissed. You don't touch another man's beard, no matter what. <laughs> However, it looks good, because he looks like the classic Wolverine in the comic yeah. books. I always like when they uh, they get them to look like their comic book yeah. counterparts without making it goofy. Sure. Like, th- this scene is fun. Like, it's just a fun little... Easter egg, and it's like, yeah, now for one last time, we're going to get him as Wolverine. Well, well, let's talk about that, because we never get to see him in the yellow suit. No, we haven't. You get to see the yellow suit given to him in the end of The Wolverine, I think? I th- yeah. At the end of The Wolverine, he gets something in an air, in a, on a plane, his mm. private jet, and he opens it up, and it's the suit. But it's like more orangey, yellowy kind of. Yeah. We never see him wear it. In, in first class, we see those characters in like the classic X-Men costumes yeah. don't they still still different but yeah we've never had Wolverine on screen in the yellow I we we will with uh, Marvel Studios you will. 100%. I think 100% 100 you need it I yeah. need it I need to see it now in the original X-Men movie when he finally joins the X-Men mm. Wolverine and puts on like the leather jacket and he's like kind of zipping yeah. it up and it's like kind of tight and he's like oh like what's with these outfits and Cyclops says uh what would you prefer, yellow spandex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is interesting that you never got to see it, but it's I'm also not that, mad. No, I, <laughs> it's I goofy. It, it would look goofy. Yeah. It's it's just a shame to not ever have that. Image. Not ever. I love what they do in Captain America, the first one, sure. with him, like the reason behind his goofy costume. Sure. Like that, they admit it's like this looks goofy, yeah. and then. They keep updating it. And I think Cap's costume is pretty cool. Yeah, when you make things updated, it's fine. Same with Spider-Man. But you, but you need that visual. I know of you it didn't get it once. Day, you never got you it never once. Got in ten years, we of never films. got to see Hugh Jackman in the yellow spandex. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people wish they got to see Hugh Jackman <laughs> in yellow spandex. Um, it's just interesting. You never got to see that. But we get to see the classic Logan look here with the the sideburns and the shaved in the middle, kind of yep. like the just like a rough kind of. Real Logan look here that the kids trimmed his facial hair into, so it's pretty. It's, it's a movie look. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so as he's like still healing from like his war that he went through, um, the mutants, the kid mutants here, they all say that um, you know we're leaving tomorrow to go to the, the safe. This is like the meeting place, but tomorrow we all leave to go on to like the real safe. Haven, like this is just the escape route. Essentially, this is our hideout, but we're leaving. Um, they say that uh, Laura told them everything that had happened, and they give Logan the rest of the money. They say, "Look, the money is real. Here it is. You helped. You saved her. You got her here. Mm. This is what you did this for, right? Like you wanted the money. That's what this is all about." And he says, "No, I don't want the money. You guys need it more than I do. You take it wherever you go. Just take the money." Um, they say, "Okay, come with us." Like, just join us. And he's like, no, I can't go with you because bad shit happens to people I care about. And then Laura says, yeah, well, then I'll be fine. (laughs) Because you don't care about me. You don't care about me, Papa. Um, He then goes, like, back to sleep. He then passes out. He wakes up because he's, like, he's still injured, essentially. He's still beaten and bruised. I really like the way that they designed him to, like, look Especially in this last scene, like onward, mm. he just looks so old. And like, yeah. there's a, there's a specific scene I'll get to. He's just like old. So he wakes up and he realizes that all the kids have left. The, the, the day is coming and they're and they're leaving. So he's like, oh, like, I guess that's that's that. And so he like wakes up. He's like looking around, and he uh, the Richter is what it's called. The, the green juice, yes. the bad juice. They left him a they left him a vial of it. And they say, you know, don't use it don't all because it all. it'll make you go crazy and you'll be violent and he- you'll heal, but whatever. 
And as he like he looks off to the distance, he they have like a binocular thing, telescope thing. He sees the kids have left. They're on their journey. He sees them in the very distance. He's like, all right, cool. Like these kids are gonna make it. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. But then he notices that there's some drones following the kids. And then he looks and sees a series of trucks, like the bad guy alkaline like trucks, the soldiers and all those evil guys. They're coming. And they're chasing the kids. They've followed them here. Logan realizes this. And he's now on the chase to go save the kids from the bad guys. And this is where he uh, he injects the Richter into his body. Um, he could have used that for when his claws weren't working. <laughs> Richter Mortis. Uh, the kids are being uh, attacked by the soldiers before he can get to them. But... The kids are mutants. So the kids have some powers. Uh, there's like a, a wind girl who, who's like kind of like Storm, I guess, who's like brings like wind yeah. and gusts and all this like crazy shit. One of them's freezing people. Yeah, this one guy's like icy breath that like freezes everyone. Like there's some cool stuff. Uh, there could have been more Easter eggs of different powers, I thought, here because there's so many powers in the X Men like universe sure, yeah. that you could have like toyed with, but I'm not mad about it. Um, Wolverine, he injects it and he starts chasing. And this is, this is where I'm saying, like, he purposely is wa- running like an old Logan. Mm. He's not running like he's like, I gotta go, oh, I gotta go. He's running as if he's, like, for me, this is where the acting came in for Hugh Jackman. So good in this. He just act, is acting exactly how this would be. You're, like, fucking old. You've just survived something. Sure, you've just injected this thing, but it doesn't help you become the Flash. Yeah. You're, like, He's bigger, heavy. He's running. He's breathing. Like it's like it just the visual is like a comic book come to he, life here. He lo- there's a moment coming up where he's like cornered and he's uh, just breathing heavily, yeah. and he looks like an animal. Like I yeah, said that yeah. about Laura earlier. He looks yeah. like just an old the Wolverine beast. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's I mean that's why everyone loves Wolverine because he's like the. The, the animal he's like yeah. the hairy old like uh, like ragey kind of guy but here it's like he's almost defeated but it's still there and I just this this whole thing is just fantastic uh, Hugh Jackman so good but he's he's on this he's got to now chase on foot to go catch up to them and he's doing that he's running and he finally does get up there and uh, uh, with the the Wolverine's rage injected into him he's he's on a killing spree now it's Wolverine's rage indeed he's chopping men's up he's like cutting them up dicing them up and Laura and him they have a moment where they just slice and dice together yeah. what a family moment it's beautiful yeah it is It's a lot of these fights reminded me of the raid actually it was that just like really well choreographed and brutal and bloody yeah it's these these fights are so brutal in the in this. Uh, they're doing like tag team, double team moves. They're doing stabbing. There's blood. There's craziness. Just a good old family time. Just a family gathering. Um, there's like in the comics. Uh, Wolf, is it Colossus always would throw Wolverine into into people or into the Sentinels right. or whatever? It's like similar. Like he's doing. He's like throwing her. Yeah, She's yeah. jumping off his back and just oh, there's just beautiful violence um however the Richter is finally starting to wear off so he's kind of like slowing down a little bit um is it Xander Rice is the 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 British the evil British dude he uh is there and he like reveals that his father was the doctor who helped you with Weapon X uh so if you go back to like the X-Men 2 uh, the the bad guy in there, uh, like the the evil doctors, is it's all tying in like this. This guy's like, yeah, my dad did this to you, and now I'm gonna do this to you, and now it's like it's all the bad guys kind of tying into one thing. Even years later, through the generation, uh, just you know, British people just love sticking metal in. I'm the- sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> we like snapping people's fingers and like just being evil. You you guys are the worst. Um, Logan then. Uh, then shoots this guy like with a gun and, and kills him. So the 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 villain leader is dead, but we know that when he's nearby, something else is. And the evil Logan is set loose. So it's Logan versus Logan. It's like when Undertaker had to fight the Undertaker. Yeah, remember that? Or yeah. Kane, Kane versus, versus Kane. Kane. Yeah. Except it's Logan versus Logan. Logan versus Logan, head on here. 
uh, they're killing each other literally. This is cool because how do they do this when it's the same actor against the same guy? There's a lot of shots that are well, clearly... it would be him against someone else yeah, and then they just digitally, digitally alter it. Them. Yeah, it looks really cool. Um, there's like a flying head scissors. Uh, there's some weird fighting stuff from both of these guys here. Um, the Flogan uh, is beating the like is killing our Logan because yeah. he's the 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 Superior, updated, he's yeah. stronger. And he basically uh, is is destroying our Logan. So Laura is is pissed and she just starts stabbing like crazy, like repeatedly, like stab 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 stab, like just literally on top of him, like. As soon as she she pulls the hand out of them, it, the other one's going in, like yeah. just stabbing. And there's blood. It's crazy. Um, the mutant kids get a get a hold of the Donald, the guy with the arm, the, mm-hmm. the the original bad guy, and they all come together and they like wrap him up in like trees and vines, and then they freeze him and like shatter. Him. It's it's cool. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> it's kind of creepy with these little mutated kids. Are like, <laughs> yeah, but they're the good guys, and they finally they they get. They get their day on him. Um, they try to kill the evil Logan, but he's just too beast. Um, and he's he's now stabbed our Logan in like the back in like the the shoulder blaze or whatever, and starts dragging him and dragging him and repeatedly stabs him. But he lifts up Logan and impales him on like this sharp jagged tree. It's yeah, so like all these branches oh, just it's like so, stabbing through him. Oh, it's disgusting. It's so awful and Logan is just there and he's just stuck there like he's dead. Like he's yeah. got he's going to die. He's been impaled. There's no coming like heal all you want. I don't think you can heal from this. And that's exactly what happens. Um but as he's like repeatedly stabbing him, like he's about to kill him while doing this, you just hear a boom, and Flogan's head is blown like half fucking off. Laura has loaded the adamantium bullet into a gun and has shot the evil Logan. Good girl. His, his head is just blown like right off. Just looks disgusting. Um, and we just see Logan just kind of dying there. Uh, it's it's like a sad moment because he's just. He's just fucking dying, dying right dying, there. Yeah. yeah, he's it's it's not. She's like, no, no, we can save you, and he's like, no, like it's this is it. This is the end of the road for me. Um, he says, don't. He says to her before he 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 passes, don't be what they made you. Don't be a monster. Be like yourself. Be who whatever you are. And Logan passes away. Um, and it's it's a sad moment here. All the, Laura's crying. The kids are crying. Laura says, "Daddy, yeah, Papa, yeah, damn." It's uh, this when I saw this in the theaters. This got to me like I teared up. Yeah, um, Logan dying didn't the second time because I was aware of it. Toy Story, however, still. <laughs> oh my word! Um, but yeah, what a film. Um, so so then they have a little funeral yeah. service here. They bury him, and they got a cross. And this is where she brings up the Western movie, Shane. And she's like, uh, a man has to be what he has to be, Joey. So they bury him with like a, a cross made out of sticks. And they all walk off to go to Eden. Mm. But Laura, she takes that cross. She turns it sideways yeah, into the yet. X. And then she joins them and leaves to go to Eden. And cue the Johnny Cash when the man comes around and the movie has ended. But the last shot is of the where, where Logan is laid to rest with yep. the X. And we've seen this in, in the old X-Men movies where like you think someone's dead, but you know something moves or mm. something like that. Nothing moves. Nothing moves. Nothing moves in this final shot. I thought this was so brave to kill him off. He's there. Like, I know he was adamant, but... Adamant, you know, I mean... <laughs> How many times has The Undertaker retired? Or, like, supposedly... <laughs> no, do you know what sure, I mean, though? Sure. It's like, you think that's his last match, and then it's, yeah, but I'm pretty sure Vince could talk him into doing another one. And that's the case with movie studios. Sure. Daniel Craig was adamant um, that Spectre would be his final Bond film. Right. He's making another Bond film. Mm. Like, and I feel studios wouldn't have wanted to kill him off, because he's their main guy. And yeah. as much as he's saying... This is my last one, guys. I'm no. My contract says one more, and that's it. 
they go, okay, yeah, but we'll we'll see about. I don't know, that. but you're saying that. But something tells me in like two years, Ryan Reynolds is going to be like, yo, yo, Hugh, let's go. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm. I mean, what's great with the X Men movies is you could bring him back, but just in a different time. Sure. Like obviously, it wouldn't be after what's this, 2029. This. Yeah, yeah. But you could do it. Oh, it happened in 2004. Right. Um, but no, I thought it was pretty brave killing him off. Especially at this point, the uh, the deal with Disney mm-hmm. hadn't happened yet. Ah, okay. So if this film was coming out today, when we know you all know these characters did, yeah. are coming to the end, you're like, cool, well, we knew we'd have to write off everyone anyway. Um, but no, I think it was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I enjoy this movie top to bottom. Like, uh, This is definitely one of the best superhero movies uh Ever. This is one of my favorite movies, just watching it back. I've only seen it uh, like once or twice before. That, that was the second time I've yeah, seen it. I, think I saw I've seen it in the theaters times. and, uh, well, the other day. It just reminds me, like, again, like certain comic book movies, superhero movies, they don't feel like they have anything to do with comic books. But this one does. This, this one does, like, but also has a lot of influence from other other films. Yeah. Like, I get a real Terminator vibe yes. from this film. Yeah, yeah. Just like... The evil, better model hunting down. Sure. Um, James Mangold uh, spoke in an interview about uh, his influences for the film. Okay. Um, so he's heavily inspired by film noir, which I think is pretty, sure. pretty clear in the film. Um, and certain films that inspired him were The Gauntlet, Unforgiven, The Wrestler, and interesting enough, Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine, because it's all about like... Because of the... The relationship, yeah, him yeah, and her. yeah, yeah. Um, Weird. Which is just cool seeing that film thrown in with the others. Um, little facts sense. about the film: it grossed over six hundred and nineteen million dollars worldwide, which is actually the third highest grossing R-rated movie. Yeah. Wh- what are one and two? Do you think? Uh, rated R movies. Yeah. Top so, grossing. Top grossing. Two beat this. The Hangover. No. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's Deadpool. Oh, right. Okay. Which it makes sense. And Matrix Reloaded. Oh. I mean, I remember there was a lot of buzz when that film was coming sure, out. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Okay. I just know that like they didn't re- necessarily want to do an R-rated movie, but the Deadpool thing definitely pushed oh, it. Oh, it but, completely helped. But I know he took a huge pay cut to make That's he, cool. He, he said that he wouldn't do it unless he could do it, make it right. Like he's like, I don't want to do some shit. Like he was like, yeah, I've done some shit. Like, the the other ones he did were not yeah. the greatest movies. And he's like, I know they weren't, so we should fix that. We should. If I'm going to die in this movie, if we're going to make Old Man Logan a thing, we need to do it properly. We need to, like, make this rated R. Don't, don't, don't pussyfoot around. And they did that. And he took a huge cut, but I'm sure he is doing just fine from this movie. Like, oh, I'm sure really? he's proud of this movie. I, oh, I, I think that's, so. That's where I kind of... Yeah. I'm like, your artistic, like... You're an actor, and sure, it's it's. No, I don't it's, want to say it's, it's an a- actor's movie. Like yeah, yeah. the the he, this would fail if if him and uh, Patrick Stewart and the girl playing Laura, if they were played by shitty actors, yeah, who were just, it it's work. just a superhero film. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. Like you'll put some flash on it. It will look great. This film wouldn't work. Um, Jackman actually said that he was inspired by Michael Keaton's performance in Birdman. Sure. Yeah. Film. Yeah. I see. That. Um, Again, it's all like run down. Like you're yeah. like you're beaten. You're defeated. It's over. But you but still obsessed. have that one. Yeah. yeah. You still have that one. And he wanted to play Wolverine right through to the character's death. Um, he had to. He had yeah. to. He I had to I think this film's tremendous. It's interesting because um, Old Man Logan. The story in that is 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 even more like crazy. Like if they were to put it on a movie, I don't think it would work as much. Okay. It involves a lot of like. If I could, I could be wrong. It's like the Hulk, like right. She Hulk people, and like okay. weird, we, really yeah, weird yeah. kind of shit. So I'm, ha- I'm happy they didn't kind of go in that route. For sure. Um, I, I really liked the way they put it together. It felt like a Western kind of style of a movie. I'm just so happy that we got to see Wolverine kill people and rated R, like yeah. kill, violence and stuff like that. Because growing up, I watched all these movies and I, I liked them as a kid. And then I kind of got older. I was like, oh, they're not that that fantastic. But the violence in it was always kind of cheesy whereas finally i'm getting the well i think when you're when your weapons are blades, blades like it's got to be violent it can't yeah. not be whereas like a lot of the marvel uh like marvel studios characters you get a, like you shoot a blast yeah. from the hand it yeah. doesn't 
like it just sends you flying back. Exactly. You don't need people exploding or things. Yeah. It works for the character. But when your weapons are literally six blades <laughs> in your body, yeah, like how else do you do that? Yeah, without exactly. Showing Same with Ninja blood. Turtles. Ninja Turtles have weapons, Scythes and, and they everything. never use them. Yeah, they never use them. It's very rare that you see. True, them. that's very it's true. Very, there's there's comedy sketches and cartoon sketches about like the Ninja Turtles finally using their weapons. Right. There's a famous skit where it's like, oh, we wait. If I stab the guy, it hurts him. Oh, okay, cool. And like <laughs> they realize that it's similar. Like Wolverine and a Ninja Turtles crossover. Now that would be pretty pretty <laughs> great. But I just I just I got I, I felt fulfilled after watching this movie yeah. because it. It finally, it does bring everything br- round together. Um, I think they did a fantastic job. I just don't know who's going to be the next Wolverine because you just mm. can't do it. So I just don't know who it would be. Would you like to see a Canadian play Wolverine? Hell yeah. Who? We'll get an alpha. What's the alpha force? The Canadian X-Men? Get oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They got Puck. Yeah, I know all of the Vindicator. I know all that shit. I know a lot. I have. There's a thing in my brain that still has like, it's like, hey, uh, I can't tell you, um, you know, a math equation, but do you know Storm's real name? Because I do. So it's <laughs> like, just my brain is fucked of X Men knowledge. Uh, I would like to see the X Men continue on in a new, brand new form in Marvel yes. Universe. And uh, apart from Deadpool, that's the only thing sure. which I think they've said Deadpool will stick around as is. Cool. Um, and I want to see them kind of do X Men right. Like, do a whole thing about it. And maybe you're right. Don't bring in Wolverine right away. He wasn't brought into the X-Men until later on anyways in mm. the comic books. Sure. Um, so you could do that. I think there's a load of characters that haven't really... Like, Gambit has sure, been such a, a missed... character. Has been such a missed yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Jubilee hasn't really been a thing. Yep, there there are big characters who you can have as, uh, as the original X-Men. What, what's his name? Bobby... Yeah, um, Iceman. Iceman. He's not really been a thing. Like, no. they're, they're three characters who are, like, X-Men OGs that you could totally start Beast. a new franchise with. Yeah. And I'd like to also see them pretty separate from the rest of the Avengers for, like, ten years. And then you bring them. And then you bring it for the The rumor is it's House, next of, House of M is the, the story arch they're going, okay. arch they're going with. I, I've been reading that that's the... Like, right now, they're writing for years and years and years, kind yeah. of. Like, they're... They have a they're continuity planning. guy. Yeah, yeah they're planning. Sure. And you said uh, on an episode, we went on some nerdy thing on an episode of Up Next, and you said you wanted to see the Avengers versus the X Men. AVX, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's not far off from, okay. from that story. That's line. cool. Yeah, House and of Venice. And that's something you can build for years. You can have the odd crossover, right. like, of a mutant fucking up during an Avengers film sure. and something like that. And it builds and it builds. Wow. And you build the animosity in both films. Yeah. Like, I think it, I think it would be awesome. Uh, do we have any feedback for this movie? We do. I know people love this movie, so let's go to that. Sure. Forum.postwrestling.com. Whenever we do our uh, NXT, we post that for that, but we do it for movie reviews too. We do. Go for it. Uh, starting with Author of Posts. Not a typical superhero movie, which is to its benefit. Has a lot more depth to it and relies on more on better acting. Hugh Jackman will be difficult to replace as Wolverine. Can't see anyone doing half as good a job as him. Uh, I can't find it this second, so you oh, gotta go. <laughs> Jalen from Pickering. Undoubtedly my favourite X-Men movie. The R rating gave us what felt like the most realistic version of Logan as a character, with the more graphic violence and casual swearing bringing us into his miserable world. I love how him, Xavier, and X-23 come together as a family. Their deaths felt satisfying, and Logan's got a couple tears to fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite scene has to be when Xavier loses control of his powers. You could feel the struggle. What's your favorite scene in this movie? Uh, I love that, uh, hotel room scene. Okay. Uh, everything in slow motion. Right. Uh, the opening, just him fucking people up in the That's first my favorite scene. 20 seconds of That's the film my favorite movie. is awesome. Cause I, I went, I went and saw this with my friend. Uh, Donnie and we were saw in theaters. I think the first night it came out, and we we had to see it. And that's the first like twenty seconds of the movie is the the claws through the guy's yep. face. I screamed screaming in the theater like yes, finally, <laughs> finally he stabbed someone in the face. And I think that's still my favorite. Like the whole movie is great, especially the scene where, when Xavier dies and when Logan dies. But the first twenty seconds of this movie, you're like this is everything I want. <laughs> and for on the completely other side of the spectrum, the gas. Uh, gas station scene sure, is yeah. just so funny. Yeah, I think I, all of them play it brilliantly. Um, Do you want I, me to carry on? I have it now. Yeah, okay. I got it open here. Uh, Eric from Sudbury. Wow. Um, 
the big nickel is made out of adamantium. Did you know that? Mm. I grew up with the X-Men film franchise. I must have been about two when the first one dropped. So Logan really felt like the conclusion to something that had been with me my entire life. I really don't think they could have nailed the finale any better. This was my... This was, this was, in my opinion, the best comic book movie that's ever been put out. The acting is fantastic. The action is exactly what we wanted from a Wolverine film from all this time. And I don't think any film has ever made me feel as emotional at the end of this one. I can't really think of a franchise that has been all over the place in terms of quality, like the X-Men. I mean, you have an almost equal amount of great movies and the bottom of the barrel trash in this franchise. I haven't watched Dark Phoenix, but the expectations are low. Side note, a few years ago, Brayden Harrington showed up at my high school and was doing the tech work for the presentation of the dangers of gambling or something. Felt the need to share. I won a nice pair of gloves. Good times. Wow. Amazing. Wow. That's so funny. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's so fucking funny. Uh, wow. How did you how did you put that together that it was me? So funny. Uh, we go to Dino. I have only seen the first X-Men movie and Logan. While I thought the first movie was good, I just never got around to seeing the others. Watch Logan based on recommendations of friends. Thought it had a few parts I liked, but overall I wasn't a huge fan. I know it is not part of the MCU, but I would put it in the same category as the first Hulk Ooh. in enjoyability. Wow. Ooh, we got a hater of Logan. Uh, How do you hate Logan? Like, even not seeing the other ones. Yeah. Uh, and I would never compare that to that that Eric Bana Hulk movie. No. Oh, man. That movie sucks. I saw that in theaters. That yeah. movie sucks. Um, that That's surprising, but it, it shows how... Uh, what's the word? Polarizing art can be, I guess. Nice. Andrew from Cal... Or is that me or you? Uh, that's you. Andrew from Cali. Logan was a terrific film. The best X-Men film they have ever made. I don't think they should replace him, but if they did... What do you guys think of Kit Harrington taking over the character? Hey, that's not a bad. I don't even watch Game of Thrones. He's short. He's sh- Wolverine is, is short. Wolverine, yeah, which is good for Wolverine. Yeah, he's supposed to be short. Um, people love the Jon Snow character, and it would right away give the movie a larger audience. The next 2K stream you guys should do. Braid needs to get out a few wins, or else he's going to be the Kona Reeves of 2K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to get back onto that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks for following us on our uh, YouTube. There. Uh, Author of Post just responded to Andrew going, do people love the Jon Snow character? <laughs> Was a complete buffoon for the last two seasons because he wanted to sleep with his aunt, whipped beyond all repair. <laughs> um, Scrump. Yeah, go for it. Bang, bang. Scrump from Pro Wrestling Tees. If you've ever wanted to see a 25 going on 26 year old man cry, just put on this movie. I <laughs> love it. It's my favorite superhero movie and a beautiful ending to the Hugh Jackman portrayal of Wolverine. One of the most interesting things about this movie is that it's set in a timeline of the original X-Men, years after Wolverine fixes the timeline in Days of Future Past. Another interesting thing is how they leave it vague as how the mutants all died out. Mm. In Old Man Logan, Mysterio tricks Wolverine into killing all the X-Men, but here they make it very clear that Xavier killed seven mutants along with other students, which is why his brain was classified as a weapon of mass destruction. Add to that, you have Xander Rice uh, using slowly wiping out mutants and the X-Gene by tainting corn syrup with a cure for the X-Gene, virtually stopping any natural births of mutants. A fun theory I always had was that the person on the other side of the border in Eden is none other than Jean Grey. Hear me Mm. out. At the end of Days of Future Past, you see eight mutants prominently featured Beast, Kitty, Cyclops, Rogue, Iceman, Storm, Cyclops, and Jean. And the news makes mention of seven mutants dying. My theory is that Jean Grey would have been the only one strong enough to survive Xavier's seizures and had spent the time since finding and recruiting her own team of whoever's left to finish out Xavier's vision. This is good. Sorry for the five paragraph essay about my love for Logan. I'll see you guys SummerSlam weekend where we'll possibly record our review for Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Yeah. Let's do it. Hey, that could be, a, that's totally a crazy theory, but it totally makes sense, but also makes it completely even more sad considering Wolverine and Jean Grey. Yeah. Like their love there. Well, I, th- I And think he dies right before. Isn't the last movie uh, New Mutants? 
So they've right. got Dark Phoenix has just come out, and I think they're doing one more, but like oh. with new characters called New Mutants. Oh. That could be a way you could get this theory. Have Jean hey. Grey leading the school. But imagine, like, imagine Jean, Jean Grey is chilling, and then the kids show up, and she's like, hey, you made it. And they're like, you won't believe what we had to go through. This guy like came and helped us, and this is his daughter. And she's like, oh, wait, wait, what? There was, well, like, she'd cry. She'd yeah. die. Yeah. She'd be emotionally heartbroken. Oh, great theory, though. Mm. Hey, let's go to our next one. Pod father, it's TN8. What? That's what he used to go by. Oh, okay. Greetings, brothers. Not only is Logan oh, the best. Okay, <laughs> I know who it's. Yeah. Nate Milton. Yeah, it's Nate. <laughs> okay. Greetings, brothers. Not only is Logan the best X Men flick by a country mile, it's also one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen. With Dark Knight, Black Panther, Winter Soldier, and Endgame. And much like Endgame, Logan pulls off the trick of giving the subpar movies in the franchise an added sense of importance. This film does away with the more convoluted aspects of the franchise and gives us a straightforward character study that connects the previous nine films without picking up any of their baggage. The brothers, Jackman and Stewart, are great as always, but Daphne Keene steals the show and our hearts as Laura slash X-23. The kid has acting chops that far exceed her age. and She holds her own in a film filled with veteran yeah, actors. Yeah, I think she's the best thing about this film. I have only two minor complaints. One, the violence. Most of it works, but multiple claws through skulls and the decimation of Eric LaSalle's family at the farmhouse were a bit much for my taste. Number two, no more mutants. Like most fans, I'm glad the X-Men are now the X Men are now a part of Marvel Studios, but I hate that it means we won't have a follow-up film following the adventures of Laura and her friends in The New Mutants. Minor nitpicking aside, this is a fantastic film that should should have served as the proper finale to the Fox X verse. I give this movie eight point five Johnny Cash trailers out of ten. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, is the New Mutants going to have Laura in it? Maybe I don't think so. Oh, but I think it would make sense for her to be in it. And he attaches a gif of Laura punching Logan in the face from the movie. Nice. <laughs> you know, I want to do that as like a Halloween costume. <laughs> I'll do it with Just you. get some like pink like, You can be Wolverine I'll be Laura <laughs> uh, Wrap someone up in Toilet paper And put a hat on And they can be Caliban Oh my god uh, Just get the Wait I would be Wolverine Yeah I could be Wolverine I'm oh, Harry I'd be, I'd be Laura Yeah <laughs> What would like, you wear? A, like denim jacket Some pink sunglasses yeah, Two out. claws Two claws I'll have three wig. It's great Put a cigar in my mouth It'll be great Uh Celtic uh, replied to Nate going ah but you've got to admit that seeing some R-rated Wolverine berserker rage was pretty cool yeah that first scene where he kills the dudes who yeah. were trying to steal his car parts heart eyes so, emoji so Nate doesn't like the the violence which I'm like maybe, maybe Nate is like hey I don't need that in my life I don't need violence well he goes on to say oh it worked for me for about 80-90% of the movie but after a while I was like did we have to do the stab the throat and come out through the cranium signature move again <laughs> I also think that the violence would have played better to me in my late 20s as opposed yeah. to my late 30s now that dad, uncle, old dude, etc. mode yeah. is starting to set in. Yeah, it's okay. Um, do you want to read the next one? Sure. Go for it. Um, Celtiki again goes, You know, I think part of what makes this movie so special is it's really the only comic book movie that's violence felt so brutal. Even in other R-rated movies like Deadpool or Watchmen, it never feels like it does in this one. Even though this movie serves as a conclusion to a long-running franchise, Logan feels so solitary amongst other superhero films. Like it's almost as though it's its own thing within the genre. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, I like the Deadpool movies. Uh, they're oh, not my Deadpool favorite, movies though. are great. Like, I, I can't re-watch them as much. Like, um, I but didn't I, like them as a lot of other people. But I think they're going... the. The violence in the Deadpool movies is almost like watching Halloween. It's like funny. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, look yeah. at that guy's head come off. Yeah. Whereas this isn't so much like that. This, this was like this is like killing fucking people. brutal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go to our last one here. Uh, Barakiosaurus. Full on violence for the win. The scene where Laura throws a Reaver's head at Pierce and then proceeds to slash the fuck out of everyone is great. X Men all aren't all about cuddles and telekinesis. Sometimes they need to kill a motherfucker. Yeah. Although whenever I see Eric LaSalle on screen, I start singing Soul Glow from Coming to America. So it's sad to see him and his family killed. That's right. That's where he's from. Oh man, yeah. I totally was thinking when I was watching. I'm like, where do I know that guy from? Coming from America. Oh, coming to America. Amazing. So it was sad to see him and his family killed, and then see him die. But damn it, Daryl Jenks, you have such fine hair. <laughs> Great end to the Wolverine films. 
He goes out how he would have wanted, fighting. Love the turning of the cross into an X. Yeah, that's like the extra punch in the gut, isn't it? Yeah. You're already sad that Wolverine's yeah. died, and then she goes back Love and it. turns it, and you're like, oh. Yeah, someone was cutting onions in the theater yeah. that day, I swear. Uh, that's all the feedback we got. We got a lot for it. People love this movie. Yeah, it's very popular. Yeah. Um, Um, I I love it. It's my favorite uh, X-Men movie. I see it being a film I'd go back to every few years. Be like, I want to watch that. It's one of those films I think if, uh, like if I found out Kim has never seen it, like she's never seen The Dark Knight Rises. Right. So I'm like, we can watch that. Sure. I I wouldn't mind watching that again. Sure. Uh, Whereas there are a whole load of X-Men films where saw it once, that's enough. When I was a kid, I always rewatched. X2 okay like that was my favorite one because the violence in that one but looking back it wasn't that violent but <laughs> it was because it was all about Wolverine and his history and For everything sure, yeah. like that if they did that one in like a rated art I think that would be the crazy because his story with the Weapon X shit is like the best as mm. well but I always liked that one but now this one has de- by far blown it out of the water this one's the best one I, I would think so uh, I guess we have to go see Dark Phoenix to really know I do want to see it yeah um, <laughs> I heard it's not good so no I, I know my but time. like it's still I don't know I still enjoy yeah like I enjoy the universe so it's like whatever yeah uh, the whole X-Men universe is pretty interesting because like Stanley always said he based it off of uh, uh, Malcolm X versus Martin Luther King in the style of Magneto and Professor yes. X and yeah, stuff like that. that. Yeah. So like that always that was always my favorite. Like Magneto is so, Magneto is an underrated villain because he's one of the best villains. Mm. And and not to discredit um, uh, the, was it Fassbender? Yeah. Uh, but Ian McKellen was so good in like the first mm. few of them, at least from what I remember. But um, I- I'm excited to see them reboot this and everything. But that was Logan. Old Man Logan. Go yeah. read the comic book if you're interested in more. Uh, you can follow us on our socials. Um, we're thinking of doing some more movie reviews. I am on Twitter and Instagram at the Bray D, and I am at Davy Portman. You can uh, find all our reviews, including up next every Thursday on PostWrestling.com or wherever you get your podcasts, and uh, look out for some more stuff. Or let us know what you want us to review. Um, anything other superhero stuff or uh, sci-fi or horror or anything you think we want to review let us know and uh, maybe we'll do it so thanks for listening we appreciate it and we'll talk to you uh, whenever we talk to you okay goodbye ahoy ahoy